Hello, this is Mark Silverman, Managing Member and Founder of Silverman & Associates, and I'm also a Certified Financial Planner Professional. I want to welcome you to the Saving with Silverman podcast. I'm glad you're here. Each week, we'll discuss different financial planning topics because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. Thanks for joining us this week on Saving with Silverman. I'm Walter Storholt alongside Certified Financial Planner Professional Mark Silverman, the Founder and Managing Member of Silverman and Associates, serving you throughout Tucson and Southern Arizona. We're going to talk about what it looks like to successfully build a financial house. So we know kind of, you know, what it would be like to build our dream home. We've probably all thought about that before. Well, how do you go about building your dream financial house? We'll make those comparisons on today's show and discuss financial challenges for women in particular. What do you need to be concerned about when it comes to planning for retirement? All that plus answering your questions and more on today's show. But let's start things off because we're so often marketing questions about the stock market. And let's talk about the market crash survival guide. Now, we all know that we don't know when the next crash is going to come, but we do know that you need to be ready for it at any point in time. So let's discuss some of the important rules that people should follow to make sure that you don't lose your shirt when the market crashes. One, I think, great tip probably for people to put into that survival guide would be to always have an understanding of how much risk you're exposed to. That's often out of whack from reality versus perception, isn't it? It is, Walter. And, you know, I've said this before in previous shows, but you know, this is the second longest bull market we've ever been in. And so with that said, we are due for something. And I don't know if it's this year, next year, or the year after, but I do know it's coming. And I'm not trying to scare everybody. You know, our clients have certainly benefited from this run, so we'll take it. But who knows how long it's going to last. But I think what's important, and you mentioned this, Walter, is to understand how much risk you're taking to get the returns that you're getting. And so we have a process that we follow where we can actually analyze somebody's risk and figure out what their risk tolerance is, their comfort level downside level uh, is, et cetera. And then we can actually compare that to their current investments and actually show them if we had another, say, financial crisis, which ran through you know, basically 2008, how much they would stand to lose if they stayed and invested the way that they currently are. So it's just a good exercise to understand how much you're exposed to because nobody can time the market. And I think that's important, but it's a good time right now to maybe look and see how much risk you're taking, depending on where you are in the cycle. If you're younger, then it might not be something you worry about. But if you're, let's say, 10 years away from retirement or certainly in retirement, this is something you want to think about. Yeah, something to keep on the forefront of your mind for sure. Uh, that risk equation, really important part of the stock market crash survival guide. Something else we would throw into this guide as well, Mark, would be to protect some of your gains as you go. That, I would imagine, is something you're getting a lot of questions about, especially right now with the way the market has gone recently. Are you advising people to protect those gains as they go, or, or are people wanting to just keep riding that wave? What's the situation and conversation usually sound like there? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. There's certainly people that want more risk right now because the markets have done well, and you know, greed certainly plays into that factor. But on the other hand, I do, you know, I just met with a client uh, the other day where uh, they are scared of the market. So I reassured them that the risk that we're taking is appropriate given their risk tolerance, where they are, their goals, et cetera. And that's where the plan actually comes into play, where we say, here's what your comfort level is. Here's how you should be allocated. And then here's your goals and objectives. And if those two are in harmony, then you're in good shape. And so that's where we're really where it comes down to. How much risk are you taking? Is it appropriate compared to your goals and objectives? Is it going to keep you on track for your goals and objectives? And if you look at those, then you should be in good shape if those two are in unison. If they're not, then there's work that needs to be done. Very important to know as your market crash survival guide, these are some of the tips to take to heart for sure. Diversification, we always talk about how important that is to discuss and to make sure that you're properly diversified. And We'll throw that into the survival guide as well, but uh, why does that in particular help us with you know the event of a market crash happening? Well, you know, if a market crash happens, then you need to be protected because what's going to happen is a lot of people. And if you if you go back to it's been a long time, but if you go back to two thousand, you know, late late two thousand seven to early two thousand nine, which was the last crash that we had, a lot of those people, and I've met with some of those people recently still haven't even gotten back into the market. I met with a couple a couple of weeks ago that called from the radio and they were still sitting in cash from 2009 because they were scared of the market. Now, you know, each year that goes on and this market keeps running up and up, they're even, you know, further scared in, as far as getting it back into the market. And so it gets to a point where they've missed out on so much. And I was trying to explain to them that if they had been diversified and, and done the right things, 
they would have had a lot more money than they do now, but you can't change, you know, decisions that they've made. We can only move forward from this point on, but it's important that you understand how much risk you're taking and making sure that, that it's appropriate again to match, you know, your goals and objectives and your comfort level. So important to remember all these things. So to recap diversification, make sure that you're properly diversified, protect some gains as you go. Always understand how much risk you're exposed to three items to make sure you have a discussion about going into your market crash survival guide. You are a a real big proponent of this next item. I know, Mark, don't try to time the market. So many people have gone wrong trying to do that. You know, it always amazes me because I actually had somebody recently and in a roundabout way, they were asking me if we could time the market. They didn't come out and say that, but I got what they were trying to say. It's impossible to time the market. And anybody that tells you that they figured it out or they can, you certainly want to, I would cover your ears and run the other way. Nobody can time the market. And if there was a way to do it, everybody would be doing it. So the question is, you know, what do you do? You have a diversified portfolio like you alluded to, Walter, as far as having uh, the right mixture of different types of investments, you know, international, U.S., you know, stocks versus bonds, small cap, large cap, different, you know, ladders of of different bonds. You need a diversified portfolio. What does that look like? Everybody's situation is different. So everybody should have a different mix. And as time goes on, that mix should change and be rebalanced and reallocated depending on where you are um, in regards to retirement. So it's important that you understand that. But again, we have diversified portfolios for all of our clients. And unless you're you're younger, you should have some fixed income or bonds in your portfolio. If you're close to retirement, in retirement, basically all of our clients in those positions have some fixed income in their portfolio. We're talking with Mark Silverman of Silverman and Associates right here in Tucson and Southern Arizona. Find about Mark online by going to savingwithsilverman.com. Lots of great resources there on the website for you to tap into and learn a little bit more about planning for retirement and your financial future. He is a certified financial planner professional. And one more item to throw into this market crash survival guide, Mark, and that is if you have a well-conceived plan in place, don't panic when the crash comes. Even though it can be scary, a lot of people, even with a great plan in place, Mark, still kind of hit that panic button when the mark starts to tumble. Yeah. And a lot of people know that when the markets tumble that they shouldn't sell, that's when you hold on or buy more. But when the heat of the moment, uh, it's hard not to, because especially if you're retired or you're close to retirement, you get in a position where you're watching your account go further and further down and you get to a point where you say, I can't afford to lose anymore. And so I get it. But if you do the homework up front, if you've done the work up front where you've done the planning and we've managed the risk appropriately from the beginning, rather than being, you know, full on board with, you know, 100 percent equities and then trying to get out when the market starts to go down, which we don't know when it, you know, when the when the bottom is or when it's going to come back up, as we mentioned before. But if you do the work up front, then that shouldn't be an issue. And if you're working with someone like us where we can go through that process with you. We're in regular communication and we're adjusting your portfolio on a regular basis and understanding what your goals and objectives are and, and fine tuning things along the way. You're in much better shape than just, you know, not paying attention to it and just hoping that you're going to guess right and when to get in and when to get out, which is which is a losing strategy we know. Well, Mark, when we talk about getting a well-conceived plan in place, that's great for those people who have one and then all they have to remember is to not panic when the crash comes. But unfortunately, a lot of people not only have uh, or are lacking a market crash survival guide, they're lacking an overall financial plan. And that's something that you help people address each and every day in your office there at Silverman and Associates. You're absolutely right, Walter. And you don't, we're almost through the end of this month already. And so now is a great time to get together for this. And, you know, most of you should be getting your documents together for tax season anyway. So this kind of goes hand in hand. So whether you're a first time listener to the show or you've heard me for a long time, if anything I've said makes sense or resonates with you, this is now your chance to come in and have a conversation with me in my office. We, I don't pawn you off on somebody else to go through this process. And we like to call it the financial physical. I can assure you, I will not be trying to sell you investment or insurance products. I repeat, this is not a sales meeting. This is far different than everybody else that's on the radio. Rather, we're going to discuss your values and goals in a way, honestly, you probably never have. This consultation is designed for both individuals as well as couples. However, if you are married, it is mandatory that both spouses attend this initial meeting. So whether you're still working or already retired, this is a great opportunity to see what it looks like to work with someone who's actually required to have a fiduciary responsibility to look out for your best interests at all times. And I can tell you, if you're working with somebody at a bank, a brokerage firm, a wirehouse, an insurance salesperson, 
they do not have a fiduciary responsibility over all of your money. And as part of the financial physical, we will discuss your cash reserves, debt if you have any, insurance, all types, and how to best allocate your assets. And we'll even benchmark where you are now financially compared to where you want to be. So you have an even better perspective of what's required to achieve your goals for the reasons that are important to you. This will become the foundation for developing a plan that gives you the highest probability of making that happen. This meeting will be valuable to you whether or not we decide to work together. There is no cost or obligation for this initial appointment. However, it is best suited for people who have saved at least $250,000. And as you probably are aware, I am a certified financial planner professional, and I believe the only one locally here on the radio in Tucson, and the going hourly rate to meet with a CFP such as myself can cost as much as $300 an hour. So this is a tremendous value and chance to finally get your financial house in order and keep it that way. And your only commitment is an hour or so of your time. We try our best to help everyone, however, our slots fill up quickly. So I can only guarantee a complimentary meeting to the next five people that contact us right now. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. This is the number to call to reach Mark Silverman to talk about your financial plan. You can also text this number as well if you prefer that way of getting in touch. 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. Let Mark know that you are interested in that complimentary consultation to talk about your financial plan and what you might need to address in your financial future. Get to know Mark Silverman here in the Tucson area and how he can help plan better for your financial future with you. Just pick up the phone and call, leave a message, and then Mark will touch base back with you. Or text Mark, and he can text you right back. 520-333-7601 is the way to get in touch. Mark's a certified financial planner professional and the founder of Silverman and Associates. 520-333-7601 is that number to call or text if you'd like to get that financial review of your plan and get a free consultation as well. 520-333-7601. Stay right with us. There's much more coming up on today's program. This is Saving with Silverman with Mark Silverman. You've got questions. We've got answers. Keep listening to Saving with Silverman. Thanks for joining us this week on Saving with Silverman. Walter Storholt here alongside Mark Silverman. He is a certified financial planner professional and the founder and managing member of Silverman and Associates. He serves you in Tucson and throughout Southern Arizona. Find him online by going to savingwithsilverman.com. That's savingwithsilverman.com. And at any point in time, if you'd like to set up the time to meet for a complimentary initial review of your financial plan with Mark, that number to call or text is 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. Again, you can call or text that number. For some people, Mark, the idea of putting together a financial plan doesn't really sound like much fun, even though I know you get a real kick out of it. I mean, you've made your livelihood out of this whole thing. You know, you just you just geek out when you look at a financial spreadsheet and start plugging the numbers in, right? I do enjoy that, actually. <laughs> that's, uh, I love it when a plan comes together. That's that's what I you do. say to yourself. I as do. You, that's as, what gets me excited. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, but for a lot of people, they just don't share that, that same enjoyment. However, something that does bring a lot of people enjoyment is dreaming about their dreams dream home, thinking of building their own home. Oh, doesn't that sound wonderful? We could customize everything just like we like it. And so let's try and relate the two worlds. Let's take something that people like dreaming about, their home, and combine it with financial planning, something they don't like dreaming about. So play along with me here. The first comparison is a pretty obvious one, I think. You need to build the foundation for your dream home. So if we're building a foundation for our dream financial plan, what's the equivalent? I would say probably an income plan. That's the first thing because you're moving from what we call an accumulation phase while you're working to a distribution phase. So you're taking all that money you've saved and turning that into how you're going to live on that, how that's going to last you and if you're married, you and your spouse's life expectancy and pay for all the different things that you need to pay for and want to pay for. And so, you know, Social Security is a big one. So, you know, and we can help with that, too. What's the best way to, to maximize Social Security? Because for most of us, that's our only guaranteed income stream that we're going to get. And so if you have a pension, we can help with that. If you do have a pension and you're lucky enough to have one, 
you know that there's some choices there of how you take it, lots of different options, we can help maximize that as well. But how do you take those assets, those incomes of 401k, et cetera, and how do you turn that into income that's going to last? And it's going to increase as well, because as we know, things get more expensive. And I've said this before as well, but if you take a 3% inflation rate, which is the number we use, you lose about a third of purchasing power every 10 years. So you need an increasing income to pay for those things along the way. If you retire in your 60s and you live into your 90s, that's 30 years, you're going to need an increasing income just to stay on par with with cost rising. So having an income plan is probably one of the the, the important things that we do so people can you know retire confidently and know that they're going to have the income in there to pay for the things that they want to pay for and things that they maybe don't want to pay for but have to pay for, i.e. healthcare, et cetera. Yeah, I think that's well said. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You need a foundation, build that income plan as your foundation. It's kind of like the uh, you know the air masks that fall out of the plane if you lose oxygen. You put your own mask on first. First, and then you help the people around you. Same thing with building your you know, dream financial house here, that income plan. Make sure that gets in place first, then you can start to build up everything else around it. And that goes right along with our example here of building your financial house. Once we have that physical foundation in place, we start to work on the walls. What's well, just a slab of concrete if you don't you know, start putting some walls up around it, right? So what are the walls? What's the equivalent of that in our financial house? You would probably need that. That would relate to your investment plan of how your investments should look. And I can tell you, if you're investing in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, they probably look a lot different or they should than when you're investing in your 50s, 60s, and 70s, depending on when you retire. So things need to change. And so the strategy that you were employing earlier should be different as time goes on. People tend to become more conservative as they get older and get closer and into retirement. So you need the right diversification, the right mix and how that should look. And everybody's situation is different because everybody has different means. People retire at different ages. People have different life expectancies, et cetera. They want to do different things in retirement. So every plan is unique. And I can tell you this, uh, you mentioned this earlier, Walter, but if everybody's plan was the same, I can tell you I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing because that would be quite boring. I enjoy learning about people's different situations and trying to take their different pieces of their financial puzzle, if you will, and putting those together to try to make them work and demonstrating that to people and showing them here's where you are, here's where you want to be, here's how we could get this to work and that sort of thing. That's what gets me excited. Yep, absolutely. And you develop a lot of passion when you start getting your home to that point in time. I have an aunt and uncle who built a home about a year or two ago, and it was just so fun to see their pictures throughout the process. And when they were just standing on an empty piece of land, but saying, this is where the kitchen will be. And then seeing the pictures develop over time, if now I'm actually standing in the kitchen, we just have a wall up, but and nothing else is in here, but you can start to see the shape of the room come to fruition. But then they get all that stuff up and it's kind of like, all right, well, you now you got to protect everything that you've started to you know, assemble inside this home. That leads us to our next comparison. You got to put the roof over the house so that the you know elements don't start messing with the inside of the home. What's the equivalent of putting a roof over your financial house? I would say protections, and that would probably relate to insurance. And when we talk insurance, there's lots of different types. There's, you know, life insurance as we know it. There's long-term care insurance. And, you know, some of those can kind of pair together as well. But you need those type of protections or at least a strategy of how you're going to pay for things. And I'm not saying everybody needs insurance. But what I am saying is, what's the strategy? If you're retired and you have a certain amount of money, which we all are limited to some extent, and if you or your spouse need to go into a long-term care facility, how are you going to pay for that? And there's different ways of doing that. You could self-insure, which if you don't think about it, but that's the way what's going to happen for most people is if you don't do anything about it, you're basically saying you're going to self-insure, which may be a strategy. But there are other ways to do it where you might be able to leverage those dollars to pay, put in a dollar, maybe have two or three dollars to pay for long-term care if that's if that is something that you need. And so there's different strategies that are out there. And I'm not just talking about traditional long-term care insurance. I'm saying there's other options that are out there that a lot of people aren't aware of that work very, very well. And I'm just saying, get educated and learn about those and have a plan of how you might protect those things. But insurance can protect a lot of different things as long as you know what you're paying versus what you're getting. And so that's a conversation you need to think about. 
All right, so we've made some good comparisons here, Mark. And if you just joined us, you're listening to Saving with Silverman with Mark Silverman, certified financial planner, professional, and founding and managing member of Silverman and Associates based here in Tucson, serving you throughout southern Arizona. We're talking about your financial house, how you build it just as you would maybe a physical house. We put up the foundation, the walls, and the roof. That covers your income plan, your investment plan, and your insurance protections. Some of the fun at the end of the process, Mark, is starting to put all the cool stuff on the inside of that home, the finishing touches, if you will. So if we're building a financial plan, what are the finishing touches we would add to that? I would say a state plan, and I may, may even add a tax plan. I mean, you're trying to, to, I think those kind of go hand in hand as far as the tax plan, making sure that you're doing, making the right decisions to minimize taxes as much as possible. And there are certain ways of managing money to do that. There are certain decisions that need to be made. Should you take it from this account or that account, which makes the most sense in the long run, as well as an estate plan, making sure your assets are distributed the way that you want. And it w- again, trying to minimize, you know, whether it be estate taxes or or just taxes in general, what's the best way to pass those assets on to either your children, a charity, et cetera, to make sure that your wishes are going to be followed through. And so having an estate plan, I'm not saying everybody needs to set up a trust, but I'm saying that might be a decision or, or a conversation that you need to have. Sometimes things can be handled without a trust. And so it's 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 looking at those sorts of things and figuring out what's the best way so that your assets uh, will be passed on to the people that you care about or the organizations that you care about the most in the most efficient manner. Well, I know efficiency is something that's really important just in building a, a home as it is building a financial plan as well. It's one thing to try and build a home and then it takes you know three years to complete the darn thing. Well, same thing in the financial world. You want that thing to get built. You want to get it in place and working for you as efficiently as possible. How is your plan efficient? How do you help make it, you know, easy and not a burden for people to get the right kind of plan in place? Sure, Walter. And I can tell you, I have, and I think we've discussed this before. I have uh, uh, built a home, <laughs> so uh, it was a interesting process. I'm glad we did it. I don't know if I would ever do it again, but uh, I can relate to what you're saying. But uh, just like you get a second opinion on your health, why wouldn't you get a second opinion on your wealth? So if you're, whether you're doing it yourself or already working with someone, this is now your opportunity to go through this process and we call it the financial physical. Do you know what your investments are costing you? If you're still working, are you on track to have the type of retirement you've always envisioned? Or if you're already retired, do you know if you or your spouse are at risk of running out of money while trying to maintain your current lifestyle? I can assure you, I will not be trying to sell you investment or insurance products. I repeat, this is not a sales meeting. This is far different than any of the other shows on this station. In this initial meeting, we'll address issues of importance to you, provide an overall view of your situation, and give you some general advice on what needs to be completed. This consultation is designed for both individuals as well as couples. However, if you are married, it is mandatory that both spouses attend this initial meeting. So whether you're still working or already retired, this is a great opportunity to see what it looks like to work with someone who is actually required to have a fiduciary responsibility to look out for your best interest at all times. This meeting will be valuable to you whether or not we decide to work together. There is no cost or obligation for this initial appointment. However, it is best suited for people who have saved at least $250,000. And as you probably are aware, I am a certified financial planner professional, and I believe the only one locally here on the radio in Tucson, and the going hourly rate to meet with a CFP such as myself can cost as much as $300 an hour. So this is a tremendous value and chance to finally get your financial house in order and keep it that way. And your only commitment is an hour or so of your time. Just as you want to reach a healthy life from a physical standpoint, you also want to reach and maintain great financial health. So our financial physical is just what the doctor ordered. We do try our best to help everyone. However, our slots fill up quickly. So I can only guarantee a complimentary meeting to the next five people that contact us right now. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. And here is your number to call or text to reach Mark Silverman and take advantage of that complimentary consultation of your financial plan. The number is 520-333-7601. Type that into your uh, cell phone. Call it or text it to Mark Silverman, and you can make sure that you get that time set up on the calendar to come in for your initial complimentary review of your financial plan. Mark's a certified financial planner right here in Tucson in southern Arizona, 520-333-7601. 
is that number to call or text. 520-333-7601. Get a review of your plan to find out where you are now, but also get an idea of where you need to head into the future. And more than just an idea of where you need to head, but then the actual plan, you can get that in place as well. 520-333-7601. Stay with us. There's more coming up on today's edition of Saving with Silverman. Financial planning for women? What are the differences between what women need to be concerned about and men? There are a few things that we should keep in mind, and we'll talk about that coming up on today's show. Learn the path to a worry-free retirement. Keep listening to Saving with Silverman. This is Saving with Silverman, the show that will help you better prepare for your financial future for retirement and the like. I'm Walter Storholt alongside Mark Silverman. He is a certified financial planner professional and the founder and managing member of Silverman and Associates, serving you in Tucson and throughout Southern Arizona. You can find Mark online at the website. It's easy to remember. It's the same name as the show, savingwithsilverman.com. That's savingwithsilverman.com. You can also call or text Mark your financial questions at 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. Let's talk about financial challenges for women. And I know, Mark, that you know, we live in a society today where you know there's a lot of attention to you know about equality and 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 all of these are good things equality and you know women can do anything men can do and that is not the way that we're framing this topic at all but there are some specific differences some tangible differences that you've noticed throughout the years of you know financially helping people plan for the future between men and women that it's it's worth noting how we approach things differently on a general basis. This isn't to say all women are going to be exactly this way, but there's some generalities we can actually pull together, and these are accurate because you've seen these things happen over and over in the flesh before. So I just want to frame the conversation that way a little bit. What level of engagement do you typically find that most women have with the retirement planning process in their household? So we're talking married or... Single, widowed. Yeah, I guess. If, well, let's start it with married. How about that? Let's okay. talk. Let's okay. talk a, a traditional uh, marriage, man and woman. What level of engagement does the woman usually have in that setup? Generally speaking, usually it's, and I'm general, and I'm generalizing here. Generally speaking, the husband is usually in charge of the finances. Not always, but most of the cases that we see, the husband's in charge, and unfortunately, and I don't think they do this intentionally, but they try to handle everything themselves and they don't get their wife involved. And if you notice, when we uh, talk about meeting with people, we require both spouses at the initial meeting. I mean, we won't even meet with somebody. I, I think last year I had, and we uh, make a mention of it, we send a letter out, uh, we mentioned it on the phone, but we will. I've sent five people home last year that showed up without their spouse. And the fact of the matter is it's a disservice, not just, just them, but it, one, we're in a community property state, so they both need to be there. Two, they need to get their spouse involved in it. And this goes the other way as well. So if, if you're a wife and you're the one handling it and you're not getting your husband involved, your husband needs to know what's going on, vice versa. So it's important because it's traumatic enough. We've done this enough times to where when we you know, lose a client, and typically, you know, if the um, a lot of times we have a lot more widowed women in our client base than we do widowed men because women outlive men. And so it's hard enough to lose lose a life partner. It's a whole nother thing that you now have to deal with the finances that you know nothing about where everything is, what you own, who the advisor is, et cetera. And so we require both spouses there so they can learn and ask questions and feel comfortable and get acquainted as far as what's going on in their situation. A lot of people, and we'll touch uh, more on widowed women here in a few moments, Mark. Two-fold question for you, though. Do you think that women face an increasingly difficult landscape in which to retire these days? And why? Why, if, if that is the case, why do so many retired women find themselves in that difficult financial situation later in life? Well, one, I think it's because that their their spouses didn't include them, whether it be macho-ness or whatever it might be, didn't include them in the decision-making and the process, for one. Two, we know people are living longer, which can be a good thing. It'll also be a bad thing if you don't have enough money to pay for those years. But, you know, they're in a situation where they need to know what's going on. And unfortunately, we've been doing this long enough now where we've seen, I've had people reach out to me where, 
in some cases we weren't able to help them because they met with somebody else who sold them, you know, unsuitable products that they can't get out of. And they, you know, were taken advantage of, unfortunately, and that does happen in our industry. Uh, it probably happens in every industry, but it does happen a lot in our industry. So in some cases, we're able to help people. In some cases, unfortunately, we weren't able to help them because they had signed the paperwork and it was too late and there's nothing more that we could do, but they were taken advantage of. So I think, you know, getting the right advice, finding the right people that can handle their situation and give them advice that's in their best interest. But that process should be handled while both spouses are still alive and making sure you're working with someone that's going to require both spouses to be at those meetings so that they can at least ask questions and get somewhat familiar with what's going on. I realize one spouse is going to be more spearheading as far as what's going on in the, in the accounts than the other, but the other one should be involved to some extent. Now, you talk about widowed women a few minutes ago. What are some of the specific challenges they're facing? Well, you know, I think one of the big things is, and this happens with everybody, is, you know, if they had a pension, maybe that the pension only ran for one of the spouses. And now that the other spouse doesn't have that pension, so that income's gone. But in every case, it's the Social Security issue. Because if you're married, then you have two Social Securities typically. You have yours and your spouse's. When you lose the spouse, one of those Social Securities disappears. Yes, you'll get the higher of the two typically but you lose your benefit if yours is the lower one. So how do we replicate that income? Because as we know, you know, your expenses don't drop in half, unfortunately, when you go from two to one. They may go down a little bit, but not very much in our opinion. In some cases, they may even go up because now you may want to travel or do some things that you couldn't do before. And so, you know, making sure that you have the income and, and that the investments need to be changed typically or need to be reallocated based on the situations, now a different situation than you had before, that sort of thing. So important to remember all of these kinds of things when we're talking about financial planning and that there are some differences between the ways men and women approach money. Mark, but we're not just talking to women on this show. So if you could speak specifically to husbands out there, we hop back into the more traditional marriage setup who want to make sure that they don't leave a financial mess behind them for their wives to clean up. What are some of the things you'd encourage them to do? One is if you're doing it yourself, which a lot of husbands are, make sure that you are And I discourage, you know, if you're doing it yourself, because if you're doing it yourself, you're probably not training your spouse to on how it's being managed. And especially if you're not involving them in the conversations. But if you are, let them know what you're doing, where things are, what's there, who they could reach out to for help. But if you're doing it yourself, you probably don't have somebody that you know and trust. So that's a tough situation. But if you are working with another advisor, make sure that you're involving your spouse in those meetings, whether they want to go or not, rather, you know, if they rather be, you know, doing something else encourage them or make it mandatory that that they go along with you to the meetings and feel comfortable and safe to ask questions about what's going on. That's the only way you learn. Again, that's why we require uh, when we start any new relationship or we meet with anybody that both spouses are at the meeting. It's it's mandatory. We, I just won't even do it. If somebody's married and, and only one shows up, we will have to reschedule the meeting. And so it's important that you involve your spouse and let them know what's going on, make them feel comfortable and know the person that you're working with so they know who they can turn to, not if, but when something does happen. So important to remember all those things, Mark. And I think it's helpful to talk about these things in depth sometimes and approach it from multiple angles, which we're doing here. But I think a story is always a good way to kind of encapsulate everything. Can you maybe share a story with us about a widowed or a divorced woman who came to you for help and you were able to make a big difference in their life? Yeah, I had a a, a woman recently come in. She was widowed about six months ago and they didn't even have an advisor. He was doing it himself. And so she had no idea what she had. She had met with somebody else who was trying to sell her. Uh, in this case, was a bunch of annuities. Uh, not, I'm not trying to knock annuities, but was trying to put her in a bunch of annuities, which she clearly, in my opinion, did not need. And so we were able to demonstrate for her and explain to her and spend the time with her and show her exactly what she had, look at her income sources. And she was kind of like I mentioned earlier, you know, they were getting two social securities. Now her husband had passed. She was getting his social security benefit, but lost hers. So we needed to replicate that income. He had a small uh, pension, military pension, which she didn't get any benefit from. And so that was gone. So we needed to take her assets that her husband did a decent job as far as managing the assets I could argue that could have been a little bit better, but had it done a decent job as far as managing the assets, but we were able to take some of those assets and create more income so she could get through and and really explain things to her as far as what she had, where she was, where she wanted to do. She wanted to start doing some traveling that 
her her, her uh, husband didn't want to do. She had a friend that she was going to go with and do some traveling. So we were able to show her how that could be accomplished and those sorts of things, but really give her some peace of mind to say, hey, you know, take your time, go through the grieving process, but we'll handle the financial aspects and make sure everything's set up appropriately so you can do the things that you want to do in this new chapter of your life and, and that sort of thing. Well, Mark, I know that you've talked before about your planning process and you mentioned a few moments ago about how if you meet with a couple, the woman has to be present, but you also do meet with widowed women, with divorced women. If they're thinking about, you know what, I don't think my financial plan is correctly designed right now. Maybe they've gone through one of these unfortunate situations recently, like uh, a divorce, or maybe they have recently become a widow and they've not really gotten a review of that financial plan. Or maybe they're married and thinking, oh, I don't really know much about our plan. I want to know more, or I don't think we're set up properly for the future. What's your planning process look like and, and what can they expect when they come in? Sure, Walter. And, and and quite honestly, most people don't even have a plan. Even people that have worked with advisors for years, they're all they're doing is providing investment management or selling them products. They haven't even done a plan to know even what their goals and objectives are. So what we do is totally different than what most people are used to. So again, whether you're a first time listener to the show or you've heard me for a long time, if anything I've said makes sense or resonates with you, this is now your opportunity to come in and have a conversation with me. Like I said before, I don't pawn you off on somebody else. You actually meet with me to go through this process and we call it the financial physical. I can assure you, I will not be trying to sell you investment or insurance products. I repeat, this is not a sales meeting. Rather, we are going to discuss your values and goals in a way, honestly, you probably never have. This consultation is designed for both individuals as well as couples. However, as we just discussed, if you are married, it is mandatory that both spouses attend this initial meeting. So whether you're still working or already retired, this is a great opportunity to see what it looks like to work with someone who's actually required to have a fiduciary responsibility to look out for your best interest at all times. And as part of the financial physical, we will discuss your cash reserves, debt if you have any, insurance, all types, and how to best allocate your assets. And we'll even benchmark where you are now financially compared to where you want to be. So you have an even better perspective of what's required to achieve your goals for the reasons that are important to you. This will become the foundation for developing a plan that gives you the highest probability of making that happen. This meeting will be valuable to you whether or not we decide to work together. There is no cost or obligation for this initial appointment. However, it is best suited for people who have saved at least $250,000. And as you probably are aware by now, I am a certified financial planner professional, and I believe the only one locally here on the radio in Tucson, and the going hourly rate to meet with a CFP such as myself can cost as much as $300 an hour. So this is a tremendous value and chance to finally get your financial house in order and keep it that way. And your only commitment is an hour or so of your time. We try our best to help everyone, however, our slots fill up quickly. So I can only guarantee a complimentary meeting for the next five people that contact us right now. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. The number to call is 520-333-7601. You can also text that number as well. 520-333-7601. Call or text to reach Mark Silverman and talk about your financial plan, your financial future, and what needs to change to make sure you accomplish your dreams, goals, and wants in retirement. 520-333-7601. Give Mark a call or shoot him a text at that number to ask your financial question. 520-333-7601. Mark serves you not only in Tucson, but throughout Southern Arizona. 520-333-7601 is the number to call or text. Get a plan that's going to not only get you to retirement, but all the way through it as well. So important to remember that. 520-333-7601 is your number to call or text. Stay with us. There's more coming up on today's show. We'll answer some of your questions in the mailbag segment coming up shortly right here on Saving with Silverman. If you've ever asked yourself what a well-balanced financial portfolio looks like, keep listening to Saving with Silverman and you'll find out. This is Saving with Silverman, the show that helps you better prepare for your financial future. And it's time for the mailbag, where we throw questions at Mark Silverman, certified financial planner professional and the founder of managing member of Silverman and Associates. You can find Mark in Tucson, serving you throughout Southern Arizona, online at savingwithsilverman.com. And you can submit your questions to the website. We might feature them on a future show. Uh, we have a couple of good ones to toss your direction today, Mark. The first of which comes to us from Penny. 
Penny in Green Valley. Penny says, my husband and I are 63 years old and we haven't saved very much for retirement. In fact, we really haven't saved anything at all. But we're about to sell our farm to a young family, and the sale will net just under a million dollars. We'll need to buy a house to move into, but other than that, what should we do with this money? Well, Penny, thanks for the question and congratulations. Hopefully the sale goes through. But, you know, it just depends on what you want to do in retirement. I mean, if you're 63, you know, assuming your your normal life expectancy, you probably have a 30-year retirement um, is what it sounds like. So you need quite a bit of money to get you through those things. I don't know what your situation is as far as if you have pensions, you know, what your social security numbers look like, that sort of thing. But you probably, we're going to need a big chunk of that money to get you through. And it might even be more. Um, What I would recommend is having somebody do a plan, whether it's us or somebody else, but paying somebody to put a plan together for you to look at the numbers and see what you want to do in retirement, what your goals, objectives, et cetera, and seeing and making sure you have the money to cover those sorts of things, including the things that you don't want to pay for, such as, you know, healthcare, long-term care that may, that may come up down the road too. So getting a plan, getting an investment strategy, all those sorts of things, you probably want to meet with somebody now to get the ball rolling to see where you stand before you even determine uh, how much you're going to spend on a house that might help determine how much you you should spend on it um, based on what you're going to need to get you through retirement if you don't have a lot of other income sources coming in. Yeah, it's a really good question, though, Penny. A lot of people, I think, um, you know, you kind of have two things hitting you here. One, you've never really planned for retirement, so that's sort of a red flag that it's a good idea to reach out to somebody for help, which you're doing. But you also check another box, and that's that, you know, I won't say rare group of people, but it's a certain club, I think, that you're in of people who fall into sort of a lump sum. Because not a lot of us have experience in dealing with a lump sum all of a sudden in our lives. Most people kind of accumulate money throughout your life, and then an inheritance winning the lottery or the sale of like a big property like you're about to do are some of the ways that people all of a sudden have this lump sum dropped in their lap. And we don't have a lot of experience dealing with that. So it's good to seek advice and counsel as well when you go through those situations. If you're in a similar situation to Penny and you've got questions about how to handle it, what to do, how it maps into your overall financial plan, Mark can help you walk through those questions together. 520-333-7601 is the number to call or text to reach Mark. That's 520-333-7601. Another question on the mailbag comes to us from Howard in Saddlebrook. Howard says, how much long-term care coverage is recommended? It seems like there's hundreds of different policy options out there. Howard, that's a great question, and I've addressed this before, but just to kind of give you an idea, a semi-private room in Tucson is around $85,000 a year in today's dollars. So, uh, you know, the average stay is just under three years, so you're talking about a quarter million dollars that you're going to need in today's dollars. The problem is medical inflation is rising somewhere. We use a 4.5% rate. You know, some places you use a 6% rate. So given that, if you needed long-term care in, let's say, 10 or 20 years, um, it's going to be a lot more money. So, you know, part of our financial planning process is we will look at the long-term care and give you estimates of, of what you're going to possibly need and give you some strategies on how to pay for that. As I've said before, and I am you know, licensed to sell long-term care insurance, How, having said that, I think there's better ways out there, i.e. using life insurance with living care benefits uh, that can cover the cost of long-term care. I think it's a much better option. It gives you um, some different uh, flexibility down the road versus traditional long-term care insurance. You still have to be uh, insurable, et cetera, but that is a great way to leverage some of your dollars today to cover those sorts of expenses. And if you don't need long-term care insurance, you still have access to those monies and that money can get paid out as a death benefit or you can actually access some of that cash as well. So that's something you probably want to look at. I know when we explore that with other people, that a lot of people have never even heard of that, didn't even realize it existed, but it does. And so that's something you probably want to think about as well. Absolutely. And it's another good question. Thank you, Howard, for that one. Time for one more here, Mark. Let's squeeze it in from Amy in Vail. Amy says, I've had the same financial advisor for 20 years. We don't talk as often as I'd like, but I'm assuming this is okay since he's known me for so long and knows so much about me. Always interesting to get the communications questions. 
Yeah, you know, uh, we stay in regular communication with our clients. We meet with them on a regular basis, uh, no matter how big or how small. I think that it's a disservice when 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 you're neglected because yes, if they're managing your money, hopefully they're doing a good job and based on what the markets are doing, that part's being handled. But why we meet with our clients, one is 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 the main reason is to understand what changes are going on with you, so we can make the adjustments to your accounts based on that and give you the right advice. Um, based on your current situation. If we're not meeting with you on a regular basis, how could we do that? And so communication is key in any relationship, especially in our industry. So with that being said, you know, I've seen relationships where they've been severed, where they come in to meet with us and they go, wow, we're not getting this from our advisor. Our advisor doesn't do this or that. And whether that's a service the advisor doesn't offer, and which is a lot of times the case, or it's just simply that advisor now isn't meeting their needs. Maybe that advisor was good when they first started, but now their needs have changed. They're getting close to retirement or in retirement. They need somebody that specializes more in where they are relative to their retirement, et cetera. So, uh, you know, I don't care how long you've worked with somebody or how short, the communication is key. And if you're not getting that and you're not meeting on a regular basis, I would say you, you should probably look around and maybe find a better relationship. All great questions today on the mailbag. Amy, Howard, and Penny, thank you so much for submitting these, covering lots of different topics. Mark, I'm sure this is pretty representative of the kinds of meetings you have all the time in your office. Someone's worried about communication. Somebody else has a real specific question about something like you know long-term care coverage. And, and then another visit you have, it might be somebody kind of, hey, I've never been through this experience. Help me walk through this. Kind of a great representation of the kinds of conversations you probably have all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it really is, Walter. And, you know, we've had some great questions. And I want to thank the people that submitted those questions. I will say this. If you do have a question, just go to the website, which is savingwithsilverman.com. Click the radio tab, submit your question, and maybe you'll hear it on the air. I've had the opportunity to answer somebody's questions. Now it's my turn to ask you a question. So here's a simple question. And can you answer it honestly and objectively as possible? Aside from the happy hellos and how's the family, and aside from the occasional lunch or golf game, I mean, I get it. I'm as much friends with so many of my clients, they become true friends over the many years. But I think the question has to be asked, especially in light of the stakes. Is your current financial advisor truly adding value beyond a doubt? I repeat, is your current financial advisor truly adding value? It's a valid question as a friendship or just relationship allows you not to be in a position to ask those critical questions. Are you talking about taxes? Are you talking about Social Security and income and risk and diversification and insurance and estate planning and health care? Are you having those annual reviews? But hopefully it's more frequently than that. Is there detailed follow up? Is there accountability? If you are, if all of that is happening, congratulations, because you've got a great relationship and send your financial advisor a thank you. But if you're not, if you're not having that, if you're not feeling the value, if you're not having these in-depth conversations, then you owe it to yourself and really to your family to have a conversation with someone else because if you don't, you're the one that's going to suffer. You're the one that's going to pay the cost and it'll cost you in more ways than you'll ever know. Let us prove to you how we can help your money go further in retirement. Let us show you with our financial physical. I believe you'll be surprised at what you'll learn and this won't cost you anything. Give us a call or send us a text to 520-333-7601, 520-333-7601. That's 520-333-7601. Or check us out online at savingwithsilverman.com. That's savingwithsilverman.com. Please don't procrastinate because making smarter choices about your money impacts the quality of your life. Get that complimentary review of your financial plan with Mark Silverman, certified financial planner professional, the founder and managing member of Silverman and Associates. Uh, born and bred here in Tucson, serving you throughout the area. You can find him online again at savingwithsilverman.com or call or text him for that complimentary review of your financial plan at 520-333-7601. Mark will set aside time on the calendar to have that initial consultation with you absolutely free of charge. 520-333-7601 is the number. That's 520-333-7601. And remember, you can call or text to get in touch with Mark. Mark, thanks as always for the conversation and the guidance on today's program. And we'll look forward to another chat with you next week. Walter, happy to be here. And I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks so much, Mark. We appreciate it as always. Again, one more time, your number to call or text to reach Mark is 520 520- 
333-7601. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time on Saving with Silverman. Silverman and Associates Wealth Management LLC is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities product, service, or investment strategy. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified advisor, tax professional, or attorney before implementing any strategy or recommendation discussed herein.